praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I bless God for giving us another chance that we may hear his word and today I'll speak about the result of waiting upon God the result of waiting upon the Lord and I'll read from Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse 31 and thereafter I'll go through some other verses let this be the key verse Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse 31 the scripture says but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint father we thank you for your word bless it as we learn from your spirit in Jesus name um, there are four things that I find in this verse concerning the people who have been conditioned or who have conditioned themselves to wait upon the Lord. Number one, they shall renew their strength. Number two, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Number four, number three, they shall run and not be weary. And number four, they shall walk and not faint. These are the people that wait upon the Lord. And what is waiting upon the Lord? We learned there before that waiting upon the Lord is giving yourself totally, casting yourself totally upon the Lord, knowing and understanding that you cannot live without the Lord. I mean, waiting upon the Lord is giving yourself completely to the Lord, completely trusting upon the Lord, having confidence in the Lord, not having confidence in self or other people, but committing your spirit your mind, your thoughts, your strength unto the Lord. And once you do that, then there are the results of waiting upon the Lord that we shall see. It is a fourfold. I may call it a fourfold uh, result because I can see it in four dimensions. Number one, when we wait upon the, the Lord, God will give us strength in the place of our weakness. He will give us strength in the place of our weakness. The word renew, if it can be translated, we can say changed or exchanged. There will be a change or an, an exchange. God will take your weakness and give you strength. He will remove your weakness and give you strength. No wonder the scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. Because once you put your life, once you commit your life unto the Lord, your weakness becomes the strength of the Lord. There is an exchange. God will give you strength. And He will give you strength in these four areas. Number one, He will give you physical strength. Did I say physical strength? Yes, He will give you physical strength. The scripture says in Romans chapter number 8 and verse 11, But if the spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you god is so much much concerned about our mortal bodies and that's why i'm saying he will give you physical strength if he is capable of giving you another body he is also capable of giving you physical strength and number two he will give you mental strength remember i'm talking about god renewing our strength and he will give us these four things number one i've said is physical strength number two mental strength every living human being needs the mental strength without mental strength you are nothing without mental strength you cannot achieve much without mental uh, me mental strength then you are weak you are weak in thought you are weak in decisions god will give you a uh, mental uh, strength in romans chapter uh, number 12 uh, verse number 2 the scripture says and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God I'm saying God being the fountain of wisdom he will certainly quicken our your mind He's telling us to allow our minds to be renewed 
He's asking us to allow a transformation of our mind, our minds to be renewed. And this can only happen from the power of the Holy Spirit. It is only God who is capable of renewing our mind and is warning us not to be conformed into the system of the world, but rather to be renewed, to be transformed. In other words, He will give us mental strength. If once we get renewed in the spirit of our mind, God will give us a mental strength. We see also in Ephesians chapter number 4 and 23, the scripture says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He's calling us to give ourselves to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. So mental health is a thing that God will do, will give us. Is a, is a, is a strength that God will give to us. Number, uh, number three, God will give us moral strength. We need to have moral strength so that we may know how to live in this immoral world. Darkness is all over. Evil workings, evil uh, schemes are all over. But we need to have moral strength so that we can live uprightly, uh, glorifying Jesus Christ in this uh, present world. In Ephesians uh, chapter number 6 and verse 10, the scripture says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We cannot be upright morally without this power yeah of his might without the power of his might we cannot we need the power of his might so that we may be upright morally as we live this world is so crooked in second timothy chapter number two and verse one the scripture says you therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus paul is asking timothy to be strong remember all uh, remember um the, the gospel is about giving ourselves to christ and now paul is telling timothy to give himself yeah to to the grace and in that grace there is power there is strength in that grace there, there is a uh, strength and in that strength that's where we get the moral uh, strength so that you may be able to live uprightly in this uh, dark world in this evil world so when the scripture talks about uh, our strength being renewed a part of that strength is about um moral strength number four spiritual strength i like it when we are strong spiritually then we do not uh we cannot give up we cannot faint when we are strong spiritually, we will always be there for the Lord. We will always be there serving the Lord. We will always be there, uh, I mean, doing great things for the Lord. We will always be there for the Lord. In Luke chapter number 24 and verse uh, 49, we see Jesus talking to the disciples and telling them, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but study in the city of Jerusalem, until you are endued with power from on high spiritual strength is about the power from on high without the spirit of god without this power from on high the disciples could not further the gospel so they needed this power and that's why jesus had commanded them to tarry in jerusalem until they're given that power from on high that is spiritual strength remember before they had uh, received this strength they would shut themselves inside in closets in houses for the fear of the jews but once they were endued with this power with this power and they spoke in in, in new tongues they, they, they had a lot of influence that morning and peter stood remember these are the same disciples who were, would shut themselves inside for the fear of the jews but peter stood boldly and 3,000 souls came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every believer needs this spiritual power, this spiritual strength, yeah, which comes from above. So when the scripture tells us that they that wait upon the Lord, their strength shall be renewed. One of the strengths is the spiritual strength. In Acts chapter number 1 and verse 8, Jesus again says, But you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus knew that the disciples could not preach or propagate the gospel without this power from on high, without this spiritual strength. So they had to wait for a renewal of their strength. That is one of the benefits that we get. And in that one benefit, there are four dimensions. The other result that we get when we wait upon the Lord is to enjoy life above average. We enjoy life above average. We shall soar on wings like the eagles. That's a promise to them that wait upon the Lord. They shall soar up with wings like the eagles. Remember, we are not of this, of this world. Though we are in this world, but we do not belong to this world. We need to soar up like the eagle in the spirit, in our spiritual life. We need to be very far away from the schemes of this world. We need to be very far from the earth level. Our levels are so high, but we cannot go there not until we learn to wait upon the Lord. Because once we learn to wait upon the Lord, then we shall sow up. We shall sow up like the ego and we shall be so high. Philippians chapter number 3 and verse 20 is an indicator that we do not belong to this world. Though we are in this world, but we do not belong to this world. What does the scripture say in Philippians chapter number 3 and verse 20? For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we have been raised up in Christ. We do not belong to this world. This world has its father and we do not belong to that father we belong to our father in heaven and therefore we should learn to sow to be above we should learn we should be somewhere above the levels of this earth we should be out of it our minds should not be entangled our ideas should not be entangled with the worldliness we do not belong to this world and that's why the Lord wants us to show up, yeah? You have to go up like an ego. An ego is the animal in this world that is known to go to the highest. And that's why the Lord has given this as an example. That he will strengthen us and we shall mount up with wings like the eagles. In other words, we shall be very far from worldliness. Very far from worldliness. The scripture continues to say in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 6 and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My brother, my sister, though we are in this world, but in the spirit, we are not of this world and we have been raised together with Jesus and seated together with Jesus in the heavenly places. You see, we are not of the world. These are clear indicators that we are not of the world. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things. Colossians chapter number 3, verse 1 and 2, says it very clearly. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of god set your mind on things above not on things on the earth we do not belong into this world though we are in the world but this is not our place therefore we need this strength to mount up with wings like the eagles that we may be above worldliness in jesus name number three we shall do supernatural things. When, the, when we are given the promise that we shall run and not grow weary, there is no, in the, in the natural sense, there is no way a person can run and not get weary. But 
in the supernatural sense, you can run and not get where. In other words, we shall receive a supernatural strength, a supernatural power in us. We shall do things that are supernatural. Miracles shall happen. Doctors will say that this person cannot get healed, but you shall lay hands on them and they shall receive their healing. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You shall cast out demons and demons will obey. That is supernatural power. Miracles will happen around you because you will run and not be weary. That talks about uh, a supernatural power because in the, in, in, the, in the natural you cannot run and not be weary. But in this case, when you wait upon the Lord, you shall run and not be weary. You shall have a supernatural power. A supernatural power. You do things that even sometimes you may not understand how they are happening. Why? Because it is supernatural. Jesus said in John chapter number 7 and verse 38, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. In other words, you shall have that supernatural power to give life. You will give life to people. You will speak the message of salvation and they will get life everlasting. You will speak life to situations, to circumstances. You will speak life to business, to dead businesses and they shall come back you will have that power in you that supernatural power will work in you john 14 and verse number 12 jesus spoke these words and he said most assuredly i said to you he who believes in me the works that i do he will do also and greater works than this he will do because i go to my father in other words whatever jesus would do on the face of the earth if you wait upon the Lord, you will have this supernatural power and you'll be able to do the things even greater as Jesus has spoken. You will do even greater things. You'll do even greater things than he did. And things do happen, my friend. Miracles are there. Miracles are there. Though the world is full of fake miracles. But remember, there is always a fake thing because there is the origin. Miracles are there, true miracles, and we do not boast about it. For we know that the working power belongs to the Lord. The supernatural power belongs to God. And we give Him all the glory for every miracle, for the healings that we receive, for everything that happens in our lives, for the supernatural things that we see happen in our lives, we give glory to the Lord. Then, we shall live victoriously in the hardest place of all, in the daily routine of life. Because this promise has been given that we shall walk and not faint. Now, walking, you may not run always, but walking is a thing that you do on a daily basis. In everything that you do, the routine of life that you do, you will never faint. There is a lot of discouragement in the things that you do on a daily basis. There could be a lot of discouragements, but you will not faint. In whatever you do, you will not faint. You may get things, you may have surrounding circumstances that may make you faint, but you will not faint since you wait upon the law. And why I'm saying this, that these are the results of they that wait upon the law. That in their daily routines, in their businesses, once you realize that the economy has gone down, look up into heaven and remind the Lord about this promise. You said we shall walk and not faint. We shall get into our daily routines and shall not faint. Because there is a, a great probability of being tested and being tempted in the things that you do daily, in your daily activities. But in that area, you shall not faint. These are the promises that God has given to the people that wait upon him. These are the results 
of the people that wait upon him and their promises and let me tell you this that the word of god will never turn to him void it will have to accomplish what he has sent it to do let this word come to your life in the name of jesus let this word have a place in your in your life that you may see the result that you may see the working of god in your life my friend learn to wait upon the lord and every time you wait upon the lord as according to psalms chapter number 37 and 23 the scripture says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delights in his way god will order your steps wherever you go anything that you do god will order your steps you will never get into any trouble you will never get into any evil scheme because God will order your step and you shall walk with God like on and off and one day you shall be no more because you shall not be in this world you shall be with him in the everlasting places my friend these promises are to them that wait upon the Lord and you cannot wait upon the Lord if you are not born again you do not qualify to wait upon the Lord if you are not born again the first thing that you need to do if you are not born again is to get born again. And how do you get born again? It's so easy. Jesus is calling you. Just come. If you can pray this prayer after me, I'm telling you, my friend, you will get born again. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with the blood that you shed at Calvary. Write my name in the book of life that I may learn to wait upon you. Jesus, let your promises that are in your word become a reality in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you have prayed that simple prayer, you are now born again you are a child of God and you qualify to wait upon the Lord may God bless you I would like you to grow in the Christian faith and I want to help you if you can if you can join us in our place of worship we shall help you grow in Christ we are in Kitengela our church is called Victory Centers and we are in Kitengela along the Nairobi Namanga Highway there is a building called Modern Center. We are just 100 meters behind that building. Come and we shall help you grow in the faith. If you are so far from us and you cannot reach us, you can call that number and we can give you directions. And we can also refer you to a church near you where you can grow in the faith. May God bless you. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. Let us learn, let us learn to wait upon so that this result can be a reality in our lives. In Jesus' name. God bless you.